What's up everybody, this is Matt Brown, and in this video we are kicking off a new series on enterprise IoT pen testing. We have a real world case study target, which we will discuss in a little bit, and we are going to find some zero days in this camera throughout the series, and we will discuss the entire end-to-end -end process of an IoT pen test applied to the enterprise or commercial market. And so if you are a longtime subscriber to this channel, this will be a little bit different. We're going to do some traditional education, uh, PowerPoint style learning, as well as what you are all used to, uh, getting into this device over on the workbench and getting technical. So I wanna welcome people that are new to the channel and uh, just to say to you that this is gonna be some unique content, but you wanna check out everything and hit that subscribe button. Thank you for watching. And uh, with that out of the way, let's jump into our first topic. We are going to introduce what is enterprise IoT pen testing. Again, this is a case study. We are going to be very practical with a real world target, but we want to discuss the theory of what and why, uh, wh why, why do we do this? Why do we do what we do? And so uh, over here, uh, we're just going to get started. So why should you trust this random guy on YouTube? Well, my name is Matt Brown and I have been uh, doing things in the IoT security industry for the past decade. And I am the founder and principal consultant over at Brown Fine Security. So if you do need a uh, IoT pen test of any sort, uh, go to my website and hit me up and I would love to help you. But uh, if not, that's cool. And this, this content can apply both to people who want that third party security auditing, but also this is totally applicable if you wanna build an internal pen test team, which is a great resource for any any uh, IoT company to have. And so uh, I do that uh, as my day job and I also have done a number of bug bounty events. I have uh, won awards for finding zero days in IoT targets like Amazon. And so uh, I think if I can find those vulnerabilities, uh, I think I can speak authoritatively on this topic and I can help you or your company find those vulnerabilities in your targets. And I'm also a content creator, so I love to educate the community through videos like this one. So. IOT, what the heck is that? Now, a lot of people have a lot of different definitions and those are all really cool, but I like to keep it pretty simple. So the IOT, Internet of Things, it's, uh, we, we had IOT before we came up with this word. I'm not even gonna discuss the merits of whether or not we should be calling it, you know, the Internet of Things or connected devices or anything else, but IOT has kind of stuck as a term that we use, and these are basically any kind of interconnected physical devices that have compute units on it, that has some kind of a computer on board, embedded with sensors, software, firmware, and the like, and they communicate with other traditional IT uh, systems, your classic network, uh, you know, network systems. And so uh, these devices are oftentimes deployed into residential and commercial settings, right? So you might go on Amazon and uh, personally buy some kind of IoT device and then uh, connect it to your Wi-Fi at home. That's great. We do a lot of videos on this channel uh, about digging into those devices. But these devices now are starting to get connected into a lot more serious situations, into commercial settings, into industrial and military settings. And so that brings a whole new level of risk and, uh, and that's something that we should be talking about. So, uh, and, and, and these devices allow us as human beings and our computers to reach out and touch the physical world in the way that traditional IT systems cannot. And so, uh, yeah, moving on then to what is the enterprise IoT, right? It's just, like I said there, it's when we deploy these IoT systems into large corporations, municipalities, maybe, maybe a city, a state, a, a federal government might want to uh, deploy these systems to help increase the 
the quality of life of their citizenry. Um, the governments, of course, uh, and militaries, right? Like, like we can't ignore that these systems are being used to uh, automate uh, defense and offense in the military domain. Um, and then, yeah, we, we can see all kinds of applications of these systems in physical security, right? So your kind of your IP cameras, which is again, kind of kind of hinting at it, uh, that's going to be our case study target that we're going to select is, is a physical security uh, type of a product. Uh, manufacturing, right? Automating manufacturing processes, that's all IoT systems that are deployed into an enterprise setting. Uh, transportation, logistics, medical devices, obviously a huge area of cybersecurity concern. Uh, law enforcement, we have, you know, a uh, picture here of a police body-worn camera and the potential, you know, privacy and security implications that those could have. Uh, and then, of course, energy utilities, right? Uh, there, a lot of talk about the security of the power grid and what attackers have been able to do in those environments. And so, lots of risk. And the big picture point here is that once these IoT devices stop being t more or less toys and are deployed into these other settings, it becomes life safety that is now on the line. Whereas before it was like, okay, yeah, maybe somebody could steal your data, they could get access to something on your network, but uh, these other systems now uh, the risks are, you know, potentially uh, to human life. And so the concerns and the risks obviously increase from there. So what is an IoT pen test or what is pen testing in general? So in, in general, pen testing is a security assessment that is going to enumerate, it's going to search for vulnerabilities in some kind of a system. So in an IoT uh, an IoT pen test is going to be doing that in an IoT system. A, an important thing to note, I say IoT system. I don't just say IoT device because oftentimes there is a whole ecosystem that surrounds these devices. There are mobile apps, servers on the back end, APIs, uh, you know, web applications, all sorts of different systems and interfaces and applications that interact with the IoT device. And so uh, an IoT pen test is potentially going to cover uh, one or more of those subsystems of the overall IoT system. And this is an important thing to know. So, so in this first video, we want to talk about if you are going to be performing IoT assessments or if you're going to receive an IoT uh, pen test on one of your devices, you want to know from the outset before testing ever begins a few things. So number one, we want to know what the assessment scope is. That is going to define what should be tested and what shouldn't be tested. And, and of course, everyone would love to say, oh yeah, just go ahead and test everything. But we all live in the real world and we know that some systems are more sensitive and to downtime. Uh, some uh, budgets will not always allow for a testing of everything under the sun. That is a reality. And so, at times, you might may want to scope the assessment. You may, you may have a specific reason why you believe you need to get a, a, a IoT pen test. Maybe you have a hunch that there's a vulnerability in a certain place. And so you want to focus all of the tester's effort in that one location. And so that's why scoping is really important. And so obviously, uh, we want to define, you know, what is the device, uh, what is the threat model of the device? So that word gets thrown around a lot. Basically, it's what types of vulnerabilities do you care about, or uh, probably a better way to say it, that's the frank way I like to say it, or what, what kinds of vulnerabilities do you rate as low risk, even if they were there in your device, and which ones are high risk, right? So, one that is always discussed with a physical device is whether or not physical access to the device is in scope, right? So this would 
drastically change the types of things that I, as an IoT pen tester, would do. If you say physical access, we don't care about that. Well, that's going to change the game altogether. Then I really only care about remote network access to this device. And it, it kind of turns into more of a, you know, a gray box network pen test as opposed to a, a test of the hardware on the device itself. Or you may go the other way and you're like, no, we care completely about the physical access uh, attack vector to this device. So that would be a part of your threat model. And, uh, and then uh, another thing I like to note in here is, is retesting required? So oftentimes for compliance reasons, uh, you will need to, uh, if you know, certain severity of vulnerabilities are found during the pen test, then you are going to need to fix those and schedule retesting for that. And so sometimes you want to wrap that all in, in as, as a part of one assessment. Sometimes you can scope that as a second assessment. Really depends. Uh, and then you want to decide on the timeline, right? So this, this is going to be the timeline for the entire project. You, are, you also want to define within that how long the testing period is going to take place and just what the expectations are. Um, and then one thing that is unique to IoT pen testing as opposed to just, you know, network pen testing or, or anything else is shipping logistics, right? You may have to, you are going to physically have to ship some of your devices unless you're going to bring people on site for some reason. Uh, you're going to have to ship those to somebody's lab, uh, like, like mine here, where they're going to perform the security assessment. And so sometimes that takes time and you have to get devices online and stuff like that. One thing I don't even have in here as a bullet point is you want to think about what kind of onboarding process your device needs to have in order to be ready for the tester to begin their testing. And uh, that may be a part of a, a kind of a pre-assessment call, which uh, we might talk about that in a minute. So. Uh, and then you want defined deliverables. You do not want to get to the end of the pen test and think that you're getting one thing out of it and you get something different, right? So uh, usually the standard kind of outputs of a IoT pen test are going to be two things. It's going to be a professionally written report that you know details what was done in the pen test and what was found. I say that because oftentimes uh, you'll sometimes get a report that only reports what was found and you kind of wonder, well, what things did you test? Like, did you test for all these other things uh, and you just didn't find anything? That's really helpful for a security team to have. And then a report review call where the customer, uh, again, whether that's an internal or an external customer, really gets to drive that discussion of, uh, hey, you know, we, we read the report, we have these questions about certain findings. Um, and they get those answered. So that is usually what encompasses a IoT pen test kickoff. And again, here we kind of had this really high level breakdown of some of those pre-assessment tasks, which I just talked about, and the assessment components. So these assessment components that we see here, uh, with the exception of the cloud system security, because that's pretty much uh, just a, a network or a web application pen test uh, effectively. So the hardware enumeration, firmware extraction and analysis, network communications, network services, and client mobile application sections of an IoT pen test, those are going to represent the next five videos in this series. And so uh, we're going to dive into each one of those categories and the types of things that we look for on our IoT devices uh, and give you an insight into what that process looks like. And then we will do our final video on post-assessment because I love especially to talk to my fellow pen testers and uh, just pass on some of the wisdom that I have seen over the years. Obviously, if you're someone who is uh, wanting to understand pen testing from the other side, if you're receiving a pen test, uh, it, it would be good for you too. But I, I want to I wanna kind of have a talk with some of my other pen testers and how we can be better in our industry uh, in report writing and especially our presentation capabilities. So uh, that will be a fun one. And so uh, that will be, so this is our first video. We got six more, seven, seven uh, videos in this series. And with that, we will introduce our case study target here that we will be going through each one of those categories on this device. 
and performing a quasi assessment together on this device. And so this is a Uniview SC3243, not gonna read the rest of that. It's a commercial security camera that is oftentimes deployed in enterprises. Uh, it's a, you know, it's just a fixed network camera, power over ethernet, and it does what is what is cool and kind of why I selected this device. So many times these commercial security cameras have zero communications with the cloud, kind of on purpose, right? But this does optionally have cloud communications. So there was a little bit of metagaming when I selected the, the case study target. So it does have cloud communications and it has a mobile application which can either connect locally to the camera or use the, use the cloud communications to connect to this device. And so that will allow us to test a, uh, an Android mobile client in our assessment. And with that, we are concluding our first video. Uh, we're not gonna not gonna be digging into the device yet. You'll have to wait till the next video for that. So be sure to be on the lookout for that. Thank you and have a good day.